Hey UTV Direct family, it's Brandon. I'm just uh, doing a quick video tonight on installing a HMF Performance Full Exhaust. So I hope it's a quick video, but we'll have to see. So I'm just gonna take some time here and just unbox this uh, exhaust system. I haven't actually opened it up and seen what's inside myself, so we'll go ahead and do this together. So it's, uh, it seems to have come in an actually uh, pretty nice package. So right off the rip, you have a, a gasket for your header and then a mounting plate for the exhaust um, mufflers. Some more here. Uh, you have some springs, mounting hardware, and the quiet cores, as well as some instructions and stickers. Put down here some more. To, uh, we're getting into more of the piping so we'll open this up here and take a look I got the uh, the blacked out version so all my my pieces are gonna be black uh, so that's what we're gonna be seeing so won't bore you with looking at more of those again packaged super super nice uh, getting into the actual like header pipe itself uh, I'm not gonna remove that till we're ready to put it on uh, all right, now we're getting to the good stuff. Here's the actual uh, muffler itself. So um, HMF is one of the industry leaders in um, uh, exhaust systems. And they're, they're awesome enough to give you an op opportunity to customize your exhaust. So um, you're able to choose the different colors that you'd like for your exhaust to be. Uh, like I said, I went with the uh, blacked out version with the gunmetal. Um, you're able to get um, different colors, and all those are available on uh, UTV Direct's uh, website. And uh, so if you have any questions or need to talk to somebody who um, uh, is able to help you out, we'd be more than willing to, to sit down and talk with you. So you got your, your other uh, can here. And it all looks awesome. I mean, you can check out those welds. I mean, that's that's definitely some, you know, hand welded stuff here. So you can clearly tell it's TIG welded. It looks nice. Um, dig down here a little bit deeper. All right, so we got a heat shield here. So that's cool. And uh, I believe that's it. So, um, we're gonna cut here and then uh, I'll cut back to um, what we're gonna have to do to take the exhaust off the machine. Uh, we'll read their directions and uh, see how everything works out. So stay tuned. All right, hey guys. So I uh, went ahead and I pulled out the instructions. Um, HMF did a phenomenal job of providing some very detailed instructions. So uh, the first thing that we're gonna have to do is remove the uh, muffler cover. It's called a silencer cover on here. And then they go ahead and they say, see figure one. So then they go ahead and provide colored photos um, to let you know exactly step-by-step step on what you're supposed to be doing here. Um, so unplug the oxygen sensor from the vehicle and the wiring harness. Um, so if your, your oxygen sensor is over here on the machine, so if you don't know where that is, it's, it's right here. So you just go ahead and you'll just remove that. Um, and then there's a couple springs throughout uh, the exhaust system that you'll have to remove. And um, just be careful, there are very uh, stout springs. So uh, they recommend using a actual spring puller or if you have a piece of uh, safety wire or something like that you can wrap around. I'm just gonna use some channel locks and clamp onto it and then uh, pull them off. Just be very careful that you don't slip off because they can fly off and uh, go wherever they want to. Um, so then once you got your silencer uh, to frame springs removed, then you can go ahead and uh, separate your um, your bolts and springs from the head pipe to silencer joint, which is located right here. So all you'll do is you'll just remove these uh, bolts, one here and one below, and then that'll allow you to separate your um, silencer from your, um, your header pipe. And so we'll go ahead and we're gonna cut and the next uh, portion of the video that you see, uh, that will all be done. 
And so again, um, if you have any questions, uh, you can always uh, call UTV Direct. We'd be happy to assist you on any of this. But um, up until this point, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll cut back to it and it'll all be done. Right, so just a recap of where we're at right now. So we got the muffler off. Um, and in order to do that, you have, uh, you're gonna need a T40 um, bit to remove your uh, mounts for the guard. And then a 14 millimeter to remove your two uh, mounting hardware from the uh, silencer to the head pipe. Uh, once uh, that's removed, it's kind of easy if you would just drop it down a little bit and that way you can get to your um, air sensor, which I just have tucked up here out of the way. Um, that, I'm not sure on the exact size of, I just went and used a crescent wrench, but uh, just be careful you don't round out the, the uh, sides of the bolt. So our next, next uh, spot here is just remove these rubber um, rubber mounts so it's just easy enough just take a screwdriver and just push it from the inside out it's just uh, like I said just the rubber mounts so and that can shoot across everywhere so uh, once that's out our next stop is to remove the mounting hardware on the actual uh, head pipe to the cylinder so um, there's six of those and those are six millimeter uh, I suggest getting a uh, long six mil. Uh, it's gonna make it a little easier to reach a couple of them. But if you come around here to the middle, uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about here. So if you look, take a look down into here, you see uh, just above your oil filter, you see where the head pipe connects into the engine uh, and those mounting bolts there. Um, your there's six of them, like I said, so you have the two that are visible and then one is hidden underneath the top for the, uh, the right side and then there's three on the left side. Um, so just uh, pay special attention to make sure you're um, secured into the actual bolt head so you don't round it out. And um, we'll cut back to our next part where hopefully it doesn't take us forever and that's removed. So uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, guys, so this is uh, a little update here ran into a little bit of an issue of trying to get the um, top mounting hardware off. So you're gonna have to go ahead and remove this heat shield. Uh, it doesn't talk about it specifically in the instructions, but you'll definitely need to remove this. So it's uh, three, uh, I believe they are 10 millimeter, yeah, 10 millimeter uh, bolts. One here, one here, and then one on the outside that connects to the uh, heat shield over there. And then there's, uh, how many? Uh, Plastic rivets? Uh, two up front. And then there's two plastic rivets up front. Other than that, it should be pretty easy. And then once you uh, remove that, you'll have uh, direct access to these uh, top mounting hardware. All right, guys. So just second update here. Uh, actually, it's more than second, but whatever. Um, so we got the header off the engine. So I'm just going to show you basically on how to, how to take it out without removing a shock or anything like that. So once you have it removed, just be careful to not damage your uh, gasket. Uh, HMF does send you a new gasket if you need it, but if you can use your OEM one, um, just makes life a little bit easier. So you just pivot it out and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, now we're to the point of just inspecting the gasket, uh, making sure everything's kosher, uh, clean everything up, and uh, we'll get to the next part, which is uh, shifting the dipstick around. So. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Thanks. All right, guys. So the next part of this video, we have to relocate the dipstick. So all you're doing is uh, loosening the mounting hardware on this cover. All right, so you get that up, get that up out of the way here. You're gonna turn it 180 degrees. What I'm trying to clean off here is to see the locking tabs on this dipstick. 
So, if you look right around here, underneath my thumb, I'm pointing at it right now, there's, just, there's a locking tab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up, and I'm gonna turn it 180 degrees. Maybe. Okay. Right. Okay, so basically, it was a little bit of a fight uh, to get this up out of these, um, get the locking ring up and out. Uh, you gotta push it underneath this hose. You do not have to remove any hoses. Uh, so then you just continue to turn it 180 degrees until the locking rings, sorry my hands in the way, are in place. Then you go ahead and reseat it. Just a uh, suggestion is after you do this, if you have a machine that's been riding like mine, um, you might want to go ahead and do an oil change just to make sure you're not getting any contaminants within your oil system. And then, uh, so once I get this finagled back down, um, we'll cut back to uh, show you what it looks like once it's uh, properly installed. Thanks. Okay. Okay, so once we finally got the uh, dipstick tube seated into the engine, uh, you go ahead and you, you torque down these uh, two bolts, which take an eight millimeter socket uh, to your manufacturer specifications. And then uh, make sure that you have your, um, your dipstick lever facing uh, forward on the machine. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to get it um, to get it to to close properly. Um, the dipstick tube is going to slightly contact uh, one of your coolant lines. Um, that is okay. Uh, HMF says that that is a normal condition. So, uh, whenever you see that, don't uh, don't worry too much. Um, all right. So uh, we're gonna fast forward here a little bit, um, figure out what we got to do next, and uh, we'll be back on video here shortly. Thanks. All right, guys, so uh, next step is we're going to remove the OEM heat shield as well as these uh, brackets here. So um, we're going to go ahead and take that off, remove the springs, and then our next step is going to be to mount the uh, HMF supplied bracket. Uh, you're going to reuse two of your mounting bolts um, from your OEM, and then other than that, uh, that'll be the next right, guys, step. So we've got the uh, HMF exhaust uh, plate mounted here. So you just reuse your, your two um, mounts from your heat shield. Uh, you reuse that, you use your transmission uh, mount stud and nut. And then you go ahead and you take your heat shield supplied by HMF and it just slips on and sits over here like this. Um, the next portion is going to be installing the um, gasket because the gasket off this machine was bad. And so we'll install the one that came with the HMF system and then we'll go ahead and put the um, header on. And then after that, uh, we'll catch up with you. Just make sure that when you put your header bolts in, you just leave them loose. Uh, it allows for uh, fitment on later on within the process. All right, catch up soon. All right, guys. So we have the header pipe installed on the machine. Our next portion is to install this heat shield onto the air intake manifold. So if you take a look here, uh, this is your air intake manifold. Uh, without the heat shield here, you would definitely melt your plastic. So. All you do is you thoroughly clean this side and then you go ahead and peel off the, the backing on here and then you just work this heat shield into place. All right. And then once that's installed, uh, you can go ahead and start putting on uh, the silencers and everything like that. So the uh, next portion of this video, we'll have the lower uh, silencer installed and then we'll talk to you a little bit about how that went. All right, guys, so I Told you I'd be back with the bottom silencer installed. Turns out, got a little carried away, got a little frustrated. Um, so the exhaust is fully in. Now, um, I'm gonna walk you through a little bit of our frustration um, and s some things that we learned through the process. So if you wanna take a look down here. All right, so initially, you go ahead and you install your lower silencer with your um, mid pipe and there's two mid pipes. So the question became, okay, which pipe is which? All right. So camera guys coming over here. 
All right, so this is how it should look, okay? This is your lower, this is your upper. Um, it seems like, oh, well, duh, yeah, this would be your lower, but when you first mount this up um, and it's looking like the way things would play out, this pipe looked like it would be better fit on the top silencer. So a little bit of confusion there, a little bit of frustration of install, remove, trying to figure it out, but in the end, not that big of a deal. Um, it's installed now, so um, you, so basically, you install your lower, install your upper, all right? You torque everything in. We use German torque, so it's all good and tight. And um, so, but just uh, check your manufacturer's recommendations for your machine. Um, so once you get everything uh, torqued up, go ahead and you put on your uh, retention springs. Again, these are very tight, so just be careful on uh, um, installing them. So then you go ahead and you install your O2 sensor. So depending on your model, uh, this is a 2009, or I'm sorry, 2019. Uh, so the O2 sensor directly threads into the pipe. Uh, however, if it did not, they they provide a an adapter to make it work. So then moving forward on the engine, uh, you go ahead up in, up in here and you torque in your head bolts. Um, your head pipe bolts to 18 foot pounds, okay? That's uh, per uh, Polaris OEM for this specific machine. Again, check your um, specific machine's guidelines on uh, what your torque spec should be. Uh, that was fairly easy, easy access since we had that heat shield removed like we talked about earlier. Um, overall, a super easy process. Um, we would have had it done in roughly two hours if we wouldn't have had to stop for uh, camera and and things like that. So it's not it's nothing uh, you can't do in your garage um, And it's it's a it's a fun project